By the end of this video, you're going to be simplifying square roots like they're nothing. And in about 30 seconds, here's how this video is going to get you there. We'll start off with a few examples where we're just simplifying a square root, getting it into simplest radical form, and then I'll start throwing in some different stuff like what happens when we have a number being multiplied out front, what happens when we have something like a negative being multiplied out front, and then also what happens when we have an entire expression like this where we have radicals being added and subtracted. So we'll go through all that, and then after that, I'll give you a problem to try and answer in the comments, and by that point, it should honestly be breezy. And if you're looking for the notes for this video, and I mean if you are, I wouldn't blame you because these notes are looking pretty good if I do say so myself. If you're looking for premium notes like that, I'll have that linked right in the description. Also in the description, I have an extra video where you and I will go through and simplify 10 more square root expressions, but I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. So we're going to start with this first problem here where we want to simplify the square root of 45. And what does it mean if we want to put a square root into simplest radical form? Well, what it means is that we want to take out as much from this square root as possible. And that means that we want this square root, the number inside it, to be as small as possible. And so what we start doing is we start breaking up this square root and we start taking out perfect squares. And what perfect squares are is it's all the numbers that you can take the square root of and get something nice. So 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and you get the rest. As I mentioned, all of these numbers are perfect squares, which means that we can take the square root of them and get something nice. So the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, and so on and so forth. But if we had a number like 5, 5 is not a perfect square because we can't take the square root of 5 and get something nice. So these are our perfect squares, and what we want to see is, well, what perfect square can we take out of 45? It wouldn't make sense to take out 1 from 45. Of course, we're going to be able to take out 1 from any of the square roots that we do. But if we did that, then we get 1 in 45, and we'd end up back with that square root of 45. So that's not going to help us. 1 is kind of out of the equation here. So let's go to our next number. Does 4 go into 45? Well, no, because 45 is an odd number. But 9, yeah, that'll work here, because the square root of 9 times the square root of 5 would be the square root of 45, right? 9 times 5 is 45, and so a property of square roots is that if you multiply two square roots, you multiply what's underneath them. So the square root of 9 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 9 times 5, and that's equal to the square root of 45. So by doing this, by breaking up the square root of 45 into the square root of 9 and the square root of 5, we're not actually changing anything. This is still equal to the square root of 45. It's just nice to write it this way because when we take out a perfect square, well, we know the square root of 9, that's just 3. And so we get that the square root of 45 is 3 times rad 5. And we can't break up the square root of 5 anymore, so this is the square root of 45 in simplest radical form. Let's do another example here. Here we have the square root of 96 that we want to put in simplest radical form, and I'll pull up our perfect squares up on the screen. So what is a perfect square that we can take out of 96? Well, I look at 4 immediately, and I'm like, oh yeah, of course we can take out a 4. And if you don't see that, yeah, you can try and do 96 divided by 4, and you can do it that way. But how I think about it, I try to do it a little more with like mental math, because that is always faster for me. But it took time for me to like actually get good at mental math, right? That wasn't something that just happened overnight. Now, I know that 25 times 4 is 100. And the reason why I'm talking about 100 right now is that, oh, it's really close to 96. And I can see that if I take a 4 away from 100, if I subtract 4, then I'm left with that 96 that I want. And so what that means is that I want one less 4 here. I don't want 25 4s. I want 24 4s. And that is what will give me 96. And so what this tells me is that 96 can get broken up into 4 and 24. So that's how I like to do mental math. And that might be a little bit quicker for you, especially once you get good at this, than doing it out this way. So the square root of 4, we know that is 2. And, well, is the square root of 24 in simplest radical form? Can we take anything out from that? Well, yeah, we can take out 4 from that. We can break this up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. 4 times 6 is 24. Now the square root of 4, we just said that that was 2, and so now what we have is that the square root of 96 is 2 times 2, that's 4, and then we have that rad 6 over here. 
and rad 6 we cannot uh, simplify anymore. So that is going to be our answer in simplest radical form. But there is one other thing I want to note about this problem, and this can help you solve these problems even faster if you can see it. What we want to do is we actually want to take out the largest perfect square that we can from the square root. And what that'll do, like if we have the square root of 96, this is harder to see, but 16 actually can get taken out. We can break up the square root of 96 into the square root of 16 times the square root of 6. And that square root of 16 will give you the 4 right away. And now you have 4 rad 6. And you can see how much less work this was than all of this. But either way you solve the problem, you'll still get the right answer in the end. And yeah, so that's it for problem 2. So let's do another example here, and in this example, we have a 4 being multiplied on that square root that we're trying to simplify. So you might be like, well, how does that change things? Well, it doesn't really change things all that much. This 4 is just going to get multiplied. It's going to come down. It's going to get multiplied by what we break that square root into. So it's really not that big of a change. The square root of 125, what, what's the largest perfect square that we could break that into? Well, you might immediately be like, oh, 25. Because if a number ends in 25, 50, 75, or if it ends in double zeros, we know that we can take out a 25. So 125, well, divided by 25, what is that going to be? Well, we know that 25 times 4 is 100. And if we want to get to 125, that's another 25 added on. So it's not four 25s being added together. It's five 25s. And that's how you get to the 125. So we can break this up into the square root of 25 times the square root of 5. And the square root of 25, that's a 5. So now what we have is a 4 times 5, that's 20, times rad 5. And that's our answer, 20 rad 5. It's as simple as that. We can do another example here where now we have a negative being multiplied out front and that negative just comes down. It's not much of a change at all. I will bring the perfect squares on the screen right now and let's see, well, what's the largest perfect square that we can take out of 72? Now you might be able to see here that that number is actually 36 because 36 times 2 is actually 72. So what we could do is break this up into the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. That's one way we could do it. We could also break this up, bring that negative down. We could break this up with a 4. If you can't see that 36 times 2 is 72, there's no worries. Just start by taking out a 4. And if you want to figure out how many times 4 goes into 72, just do some division. And you'll see that it goes in 18 times, so you'd break this up as the square root of 4 times the square root of 18. But I did say that we could break it up this way with 36 and 2. And when we do that, the square root of 36, that's just 6. And we can't break up the square root of 2 anymore, so we're already done. We have negative. Don't forget that negative. We have a 6. And we have a square root of 2. And that gives us our answer of negative 6 rad 2. Now moving on to our last problem here, this looks like a mess, but really it's the same thing that we've been doing, just with a little more added on. Now we're going to simplify three square roots here. So let's just do what we've been doing. Here we have a 2, that's going to be multiplied by the square root of 50, broken up. What's the largest perfect square that we can take out of 50? Well, we can take out a 25. So this breaks up into the square root of 25 times the square root of 2, right? 25 times 2 is 50, and the square root of 25 is 5. Then we have plus, we have that 6, and we can break up the square root of 18. What's the largest perfect square we can take out of 18? Well, we can take out a 9. So this breaks up into the square root of 9 times, 9 times 2 would be 18, so that's the square root of 2. And we know the square root of 9 is 3. And then lastly, we have minus 3 times, we got to break up that square root of 48. And now, well, what's the largest perfect square that goes into 48? Well, you might not be able to see it right away, and so you might be like, okay, well, I know that I can take out a 4. We can break this up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 12, because 4 times 12 is 48, 
and then you could break apart that square root of 12 into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So that's one way that you could do it, but if we want to take out that largest perfect square, you might be able to see that 16 is that number. We could break this up into 16 and 3, because 16 times 3 is 48. And right from there, we already get that 4 rad 3. So either way is going to work, but again, this way is a little bit less work than the other way. So let's keep simplifying here. Over here we have a 2 times 5, that's 10, and we have a rad 2. So that's 10 rad 2. And then we have a 6 times 3, that's 18, and we have a rad 2. And lastly, we have a negative 3 times 4, that's negative 12, and we have a rad 3. And so now, we just have to combine some like terms. In, by like terms, what do I mean? There's no like x's or y's or anything like that. So what, what am I talking about? Well, if we have two numbers that have the same square root, then they can be added together. This can combine to be 28 rad 2, and let me show you why. If we say, let's say x is equal to rad 2, this is the easiest way to see it, in my opinion. This will end up being 10x plus 18x, right? The rad 2s just become an x because I'm saying that they're the same thing. And so, of course, here you can see that we combine like terms. This is 28x. But remember, I said that x was equal to rad 2. So this is the same thing as 28 times rad 2. So here you can see how, oh, we can actually combine like terms here. But the rad 3, that's not a rad 2, so we're not going to be able to combine that there. It's still going to sit on the outside. Our final answer here is going to be that 28 rad 2 minus a 12 rad 3. And that is our final answer for the final problem for this video. So that's simplifying square roots in a nutshell. And if you feel pretty comfortable with this at this point, then here's a problem for you to try and answer in the comments. I made this one pretty quick for you guys. It's the square root of 200. So simplify that. Let me know what your answer is in the comments. And if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this video, again, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you when I can. Now remember, I do have that extra video linked where you and I will go through and simplify 10 more square roots, and I'll include some harder problems in that 10, like where we have numbers in the hundreds under the square root. So if you're looking for some more practice, especially if you have a quiz or a test coming up on this kind of stuff, then I highly recommend you check out that extra video in the description, and while you're there, you might as well snag the notes for this video as well. Lastly, make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, and uh, yeah, I mean, I would say more about that, but like, this video has already been hard enough to record. Like I've been like turning the cough every like five seconds and I've just, I have to cut all those out because like I'm kind of getting sick and my voice, I don't know if you can tell, is like a little bit different than it normally is. So if you want, you can throw me a pity sub. <laughs> you can just pity subscribe to the YouTube channel. That'd be great. But yeah, on that note, that's going to do it for this video, guys. And I'll see you soon.